Hello YouTube, how are we doing today? Today is December 3rd, 2017 and we have a game review coming for you and this one is going to be a PS4 release and we are and it will be a uh, Lego City Undercover built to us by WB Games and Fusion Games now this game um, follows the story of police officer Chase McLean who is on the beat of <coughs> the Lego City Police Department as he is trying to track down the uh, criminal Rex Fury. Unfortunately for him, his superior isn't exactly the biggest fan of Chase McLean. So naturally you're going to have to win his trust, you start as a civilian, and eventually work your way up. And eventually you do become a cop and progress to the story. The game is 15 chapters long, which is always fun. A good long game. Everybody likes to play those. Main story is 15 chapters long, plus, and this is always a fun one, there are mad act side activities to do. Kind of like if you were playing, say, a Grand Theft Auto, or even, to a degree, Sleeping Dogs. Except this one's actually G-rated. Because <laughs> this is the G-rated version of it. Um, and along the way, to do different missions, you will have to build things. But to do that, you're going to need bricks. Lots and lots of bricks. And each item that you build is either going to be a crucial item that you have to build, or it could be a little bit of a side uh, side note. Uh, example would be there are ramps that you have to build, and there are call-in points. The ramps aren't necessarily um, important. Well, they kind of are, especially when you do time trials. But they aren't really important outside of that. The colon points are more important and they're worth 8,000. 8,000 bricks. But let's talk about the bricks because this is intriguing. So, Legos, for those of us who forget, are essentially the building blocks we used to play with as a kid. And there was different sets you played with. Um, a police department, um, a fire department, a house, a log cabin, well, I, that was more Lincoln Logs. But you had different things you could build, right? And they came in the set. In this game, you would think that getting the Legos would be plentiful. Not really. While, yes, there are uh, what are called super bricks that you can get, which can range anywhere from 500 to 1,000 to even 10,000 bricks for every time you grab one. There's also getting bricks from destroying things. Now, yes, there's a bunch of things you can just hack away at and destroy at any one time, but what about getting them other ways? Well, there's the option of running into people. And if every time you do that, you can get the bricks from their from their destruction or their grades of destruction. So yes, in this game, being a destructive jerk is something that is unfortunately required. What makes this somewhat aggravating, however, is when you need <clears throat> a set number of bricks to be able to progress in a mission. Because yes, missions are can be progression locked. In order to be able to continue at certain points in the mission, the player, that's you, must sometimes be able to make a uh, object that is anywhere between twenty to fifty thousand bricks. So you have to hope that you know where the super bricks are that can get you to the total that you need to be at. Sounds like fun, don't it? This is why personal opinion, the bricks should have been more plentiful than uh, they 
than they were, at least to me. Now there are special other kinds of bricks in the game. They are called red bricks. The red bricks specifically give you the cheats that you can use in the game. But these bricks are different. Because you see, what the, 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 the cheats that they can give you are stud multipliers. They can give you instant vehicles, costume changes, and so forth. That's actually pretty cool when you think about it because considering what one of the um, trophies slash achievements are in LEGO City Undercover, which is getting 4 billion studs. Not million, which I thought it was originally. Billion. You're going to need every multiplier possible. The multiplier, by the way, is placed on the, or excuse me, under the portrait in the upper left hand corner of the screen. And by the way, this game can be played with two players, so you can do split screen co-op. Not necessary, but it's a fun thing to do, especially when you want to have two people running around like a, like a nut, causing all kind of destruction. And oh, I mentioned that there are different side activities. Well, <laughs> there's a bunch of them. Be it capturing Martians, arresting gangs, or even, and I bullshit you not on this one, taking pigs and shooting them to a farmer. There are a number of different activities you're going to have to do, and oh, by the way, they're, ne they're necessary because in this game there are 450 gold bricks you can get. Some of them come from activities, some of them come from just beating the level or a mission in, a, in, a, in the game, story mission in the game, or getting the LEGO City Hero Achievement for a level. How is that done? Well, in every special assignment in the game, there is a meter that appears in the top center. That meter uh, goes up and up and up as you collect different things. Now I'm not sure 100% if it has to do with the studs or studs and the bricks. I seem to, the way I'm figuring it, it seems to go with the studs that you pick up, which is also why the multipliers that you pick up are very important in the game. Because it almost ensures that you're going to get the LEGO City hero for the level. So where do we go from here? Well, every time you get Lego City Hero, uh, there's actually an achievement. For, there's actually a trophy for that, by the way. Getting Lego City Hero in one level is a, a trophy. Getting it in all the levels, all 15, is also a trophy. Although it's odd, I don't think I have found a way that it actually can tell you which one you actually, which levels you've actually cleared. What's ironic is most of the levels that I have the LEGO City achievement for are near the end of the game, or near the second half because I got the multiplier bricks <clears throat> for the studs. So I actually have to go back to the earlier levels and get those. There's also badges that you have to pick up. Every time that you collect one of these, uh, every time you collect a piece of a badge or do something at a level, you get a piece of a badge. Get all four pieces, congratulations, you get the badge, and that's also a trophy. There's a trophy for uh, getting all the badges at any level. There's also five hidden ones throughout the course of LEGO City. So again, you're going to be busy. And not, the least, and not the least of which is free running. Wait, free running? In a LEGO game? Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought that was weird. But they, but they have it, and the free runs act pretty much like a time trial. Except that they work a little bit differently than a time trial. In a time trial, it's a checkpoint. You go from, you're basically doing one circuit around a set track, and you have to get to different uh, checkpoints before the time runs out. Well, in a free run, it's different. There's a certain number of clocks, and you have to get from point A to point B. It's basically one sprint. Here's where it's tricky, though. 
sometimes, sometimes, the end game of that particular course isn't necessarily um, obvious. I'll give you an example. In the Fort Meadow level, or the Fort Meadow section, there is a free run that you have to do on a castle. Well, I thought, foolishly, foolishly, that you had to jump off the top of the castle and go to a po go to a point further away from the free run track. Nope. Turns out that after I looked it up, the end of the uh, free run is actually on top of the castle. Hmm. That was odd to me. Like, it did, because it didn't seem obvious to me, but, hey, what can you do? Now here's what's even f f uh, better. Try to hit the free run, what you have to do is you have to go through the course one time, untimed, and then you have to get the uh, icon to start the race. And you're given a set number of time to make it through the entire course. And it's actually a lot of fun, but it can also be frustrating, especially when you consider the fact that the perspective that the game uses at times when you're doing um, anything except for driving. When you're doing anything as far as a mission or as far as um, a free run, it can get a little wonky because the camera likes to change its perspective on you. And sometimes it's fixed, so you really, it fixes itself so you can't move it to see where you have to go next. Which sometimes can make the jumps a bit more frustrating. Especially when you're looking at it from a 2.5 perspective. I, you can jump into the back, you know, it feels like you can jump into the background, into the foreground, but you're not really. You're doing one continuous side scroll, and it can be from right to left or left to right. The problem with this is, is that every time the camera changes, so does the directions on the analog stick that you're using. What I mean by this is, and what makes, what makes this frustrating is, if you're doing the free run, and it starts with the camera behind you, you're thinking, oh, I can just keep pushing up. Then it switches to a side view, and if you push up, you go off the beam, and then you have to hurry and run back to the start point. At that point, you might as well just restart the challenge if you can, which is another issue. It turns out that sometimes you can't actually just um, restart the challenge. You have to quit the challenge, and then it doesn't take you back to the beginning of the level, or the beginning of the uh, race so you can click on the icon. No, it quits you where, where you were so you couldn't go back. It's not as if you completed the free run, which I don't get at all. Uh, I will say this for anybody who's curious. Through my time playing the main story of the game, I have actually had the game crash twice on me. Okay? One of those times was actually during a time trial, and that was annoying considering that I was actually doing fairly well in it, and I thought that I would have a chance at actually completing it. Now, spoiler, I actually did, but that's a whole other issue. Uh, <clears throat> now we have to ask this question. Is this game actually worth the $40, $50? Yeah! But you're going to have to be ready for this because, yes, like I said, it did crash on me a couple times. I did have some other technical issues. Um, there will be times when you jump onto a car and you try to use it for a platform to get onto a roof. Well, turns out the controls, which the X button is supposed to be your jump button, they lock up on you. You literally can't do anything and sometimes you have to hope that you can fall off the car before you can do anything again. It's annoying. It shouldn't happen. But I don't know what's more annoying. That or getting into a vehicle or trying to jump into a vehicle for a time trial 
and then the game locks up on you that way. And that's happened to me in the Fort... It was a Fort... I'm sorry, was it Fort Menor or was it Blue Bell? I want to say it was the Blue Bell National Park section, because there's a bunch of different sections. There's Fort Menor, there's Blue Bell, there's one called, uh, I believe it's Cherry Tree Plaza, there's one called Auburn, there's the Lego City Airport, there's um, Liberty Island, there's all kinds of different places you can go to. But it's just so aggravating when you're doing some of these missions and those technical issues happen. Here the game crashes, or the game won't let you jump when you know you should have been able to jump. And it's just... Uh, but that being said, the game is a fun game. I will say this also before I give the um, final thing. If you have a young child who you bought this game for, it's going to be fun for them, but also you're going to have to play it with them for the simple reason that you don't want them to get frustrated. So if you see them doing a time trial and they fail it a couple times, and you're a parent, you might want to take the controls from them. I'm just saying. Uh, because otherwise, they're going to get frustrated. They may not want to finish the game. And then either A, you have to finish the game, or you're out the, or you're out the money that you paid for this game. So, there's that. Uh, other than that, though, it is a good game, and everybody should go out and play it. Like I said, it is a G-rated version of... Uh, Grand Theft Auto. So, <laughs> if you're looking for some really crude stuff to happen in the game, it's not happening. But, there are many, 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 many hours of enjoyment into this game. Like I said, I have 37% of the trophies. I am 40% completion, completed game-wise as far as challenges go for, go for and such. I have completed the full story, though. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to go and try and get the Platinum on this thing, because I actually want it. And just know that you're going to be hours playing this game. This is going to be like playing uh, Star Ocean Last Hope International, which I recently bought on PlayStation 4 because I hate my life. <laughs> anyway, I hope you have a good one. Go check out... Lego City Undercover, and this is the first game. I don't know what the next one's going to be, though. Because <laughs> I'm looking at my stack of games over here, games that I can play through, and Lord howdy. Dude, we have enough to go through. Take care, friends. I will see you later.